this is Mrs. Ross and this is lesson 23. We are going to subtract mixed numbers. So mixed numbers are numbers that have a whole number and a fraction. And we are going to use regrouping and you'll see what that means in just a second. Basically we can't subtract a larger fraction from a smaller fraction so we have to borrow from the whole number. I uh, highly suggest that you write this down somewhere uh, in your spiral preferably so we don't lose it or anything like that. But uh, ask questions because this is uh, not easy. So A, there were seven, seven pies on a shelf. If the server removes two and one third, so this is actually two and one third pies, how many pies will be left? So what I have is I have seven minus two and one third. Now I can't subtract two and one third from nothing. So I'm gonna borrow one. So when I borrow one, this becomes six, but it needs to be one in a form that I can subtract from. So I'm gonna borrow three over three because it has the same denominator. So is six and three over three, seven? Yes, absolutely. So let's go ahead and subtract. Three minus one is two thirds, and then six minus two is four. Okay, and that's kind of what it's going to look like. Let me change colors. Oops, or not. Here we go. Okay, so here it looks kind of odd, this direction, but, and I don't really know, it's not subtraction there, but this is six and two-fifths minus one and four-fifths. So what you'll see is the two-fifths is greater than the four-fifths, so I have to borrow one. And I'm going to borrow one, which leaves me with five, so one going to be five-fifths um, because it needs to have the same denominator as what we're using here. So really what I have now is I have five and two plus five is seven-fifths minus one and four-fifths. So this just came over without any change. Now I can subtract these. So seven minus four is three and five minus one is four. And that's my answer there. All right, here, let me make this look normal because it's kind of, anyway, five and one-sixth minus one and five-sixths. So again, you see the five is greater than the one, and I'm going to have to borrow one from five. So this is four, but I have to borrow one in a form that I can use that has the same denominator. So my one looks like six over six. So let's see what this looks like. We have four, and then one plus six is seven six, and then this is just going to come over just as it is. Now I can subtract seven minus five, which is two six, and four minus one, which is three. Here I also have to reduce, okay, because I can divide the top and the bottom by two. I keep my whole number, right? Two divided by two is one, six divided by two is three, and that's my answer. All right, here I have percent, uh, which is per hundred, but we have 100 minus 12 and a half. So I'm gonna have to borrow one from 100, which makes this 99. And I need uh, the one to be in a form that I can subtract. So I'm gonna use two over two. Now I have two minus one, which is one, nine minus two, which is seven, nine minus one, which is eight. So then I'll put the percent on the ends there. And I think that's the last one we have for, nope, never mind, let's do this one. 83 and one third minus 16 and two thirds. So I'm gonna have to borrow one. That makes this 82. And I have to add my one to the fraction here. So let's, and this is one plus three is four. This just comes over. Thirds. 4 minus 2 is 2. Here I'm going to have to subtract. I've got to borrow. So um, 12 minus 6 is uh, 6. 7 minus 1 is 6. So I get 66 and 2 thirds percent. Do we have another problem? No, nope, we don't. All right. If you have any questions, please let me know. This takes a little bit of getting used to. So if you're still frustrated, that is okay. We are going to work through it together. Have a great day.